The Bengals are solidifying their roster. You ready? Because I'm ready. Let's go. What is up, Bengals fam? It's your boy Mike coming back at you with, at long last, another Who Daily. Look, I'm going to be straight with you guys. I really find it tedious to follow each and every pre or uh, off-season roster move and and how is this player doing in practice and in camp and all this stuff it's you know it's exhausting i end up talk you, you end up talking about lots of players who are not going to end up being on this or any other team so now we're getting close to the roster cut we're getting to the roster cut down days we're getting to the 50 man, we're at the 53 man cut down the bengals are making waiver claims they're cutting their their team down you're starting to see it take shape just like I told you at the end of last year, this team's going to look very, very similar outside of the offensive line as it did last year. That's because they went to the Super Bowl last year. Why would you change that much about your team? And you got a lot of your main stars under a rookie contract. But let's go through some headlines real quick. Um, basically, what happened today. One big thing that you guys would be interested in, Zach Taylor, uh, in press conference today, formally announced that, uh, that Cordell Volson will be... Uh, the starting left guard, he said, and I quote, we are moving forward with Cordell at left guard. Cool. Uh, that's fine with me, by the way. Uh, I've said it from the beginning. Nobody should have a have a claim on that left guard spot until somebody goes into camp and proves that they uh, proves that they want it. And that's what Cordell Volson did on top. You know, that you, may, you say if, if it maybe it wasn't a fair fight, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, Jackson Carmen, via injury and underperforming, simply lost the job to Cordell Volson, which, by the way, means the Bengals did a great job in drafting and linemen in the fourth round. So, that being said, there's more competition coming for Cord Cordell Volson. We'll get to that in a minute. The Bengals made some waiver wire uh, uh, pickups today that are really, really interesting. What's even also interesting is uh, who they've cut uh, in order to make space for these guys on the roster but the three big pickups that they made the Bengals picked up tight end Devin Asiasi which is a big deal uh Devin Asiasi uh was and I, I know you guys heard that OJ Howard's in the building he's still there they still may end up signing OJ Howard right uh but what we're looking at is competition here for tight end three slash four on the roster depending on how many they roster um but uh Rest assured, uh, the starter's already going to be in place. Drew Sample's going to be the number two. We're talking about, uh, you know, maybe one of these guys, maybe Asiasi can outperform Drew Sample, or maybe maybe this injury uh, sticks around a little longer than Drew Sample wants it to, and you see a little bit more out of Asiasi. But he is a mainly, he's, um, he's a little bit more of a playmaker than O.J. Howard. I know that sounds weird. O.J. Howard is... Uh, had an athletic, a really good athletic profile, but uh, really in the NFL, uh, O.J. Howard made, has made his name as more of a blocking tight end than he is a, a big playmaking tight end, whereas Asiasi has more of a uh, pass catcher's resume. He put up, he's 25 years old, 6'3", 260, really good size for a tight end. You like to see him a little bit taller than that, but 6'3", 260, 79 PFF grade for his NCAA career, or I'm sorry, in 2019, that was for UCLA. He was drafted. So in 2019 for the Bruins, UCLA, he had 44 receptions, 641 yards, four tutters. Uh, he's more. He's got more of a, a pass catching, route running ability that I think than OJ Howard. Um, so really interesting uh, pickup uh, for the Bengals. Uh, the next one that, that they picked up, uh, Jay Tufele. This is a six foot three, three hundred and five pound defensive tackle. He's twenty three years old. He was a fourth round draft pick. Um, he has very similar PFF grade, seventy eight overall PFF grade in his NCAA uh, career. Uh, last uh, last season that he played in college, um, he put up forty one tackles, five and a half uh, tackles for loss, and three and a half sacks. That was in twenty nineteen. That was as a sophomore. So, uh, Jay, Jay Tufele, I think this is obvious. This is obviously three tech depth, right? He's 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 a three tech type uh, defensive tackle. 
Um, this is going to be to give uh, Zach Carter some some breathing room, and also they, they just need more bodies at that defensive tackle position in order to rotate, get a good rotation, and keep people fresh. So I don't I don't expect a huge uh, pop out of him, but if they can get you know, this is a 23 year old. That's a young, that's a young dude. If they can coach him up a little bit, if he can learn from guys like DJ reader, uh, Sam Hubbard, these guys rushing uh, from the three, three to five tech technique, uh, uh, position on the defense could be a pretty good pickup, but this is a depth piece right here. The big one that main that, that, and I, I teased it earlier, right? The big one I wanted to talk to you guys about max sharping. This is a, he played tackle at Northern Illinois. Uh, this was back in uh, 2018, I believe, is when he was drafted. Um, he put up just another one of these Northern Illinois guys that just, uh, they, they know how to find their offensive linemen. They, how to, they know how to find tackles. So Max Sharping put up just a beastly 84 PFF score in his career in the, in, in the NCAA. So he did what, what do we talk about during our draft episodes? He dominates the lesser competition, right? Uh, and he tested like crazy. If you look at his Raz score, now his now he did not. Max Sharping did not run in the in the combine, so he, I don't have a forty time for him. But everything else is really good. 27, 27 bench reps, twenty seven bench reps is solid. That's what you're looking for out of a big fella. Uh, twenty eight inch vertical, not too bad. Uh, a nine foot broad jump, that's really good. Uh, that is uh, really what you're looking for. But he, he put up a uh, RAS score of 8.84. Put that in perspective. Pene Sewell, who everybody was losing their minds about uh, uh, the Bengals drafting instead of Jamar Chase, put up an 8.96 RAS score. Now, Pene Sewell ran. He did all of his testing. So this is a more complete score for Pene Sewell. But Max Sharping has a really good upside. This is a 26-year-old. He's He has a, a few years in the league under his belt. Um, he is a better pass blocker than he is a run blocker. So I look for Max Sharping to push Cordell Volson. And honestly, you may see Jackson Carmen get cut from this team. Don't be surprised if that happens because uh, they need to make more room on this roster. I'm not sure they're ready to give up on Jackson Carmen. But hey, don't, uh, you know, don't be surprised if they end up cutting this guy. If he can't find the field... Uh, they've given him several opportunities. I think they'll give him one more shot. I think they're going to move him back out. Max Sharping is now going to be the swing uh, guard, for, uh, you know, the backup swing guard pushing Cordell Volson for that starting spot. I think they're going to move. I think they're going to move Jackson Carmen back to left tackle, and or back back to left or right tackle. More than likely left, and he'll be the backup left tackle specifically. Now you're starting to see where this is get, becoming a problem. If Jonah Williams never gets hurt, Jackson Carmen never sees the field. So how valuable is it to have a guy, a backup offensive lineman who can only play one position on your team if he even can play that position because he hasn't proven that he can play guard yet, let alone tackle in the NFL. So we'll see what happens with Jackson Carmen, but Max Sharping is a really high upside, hardworking uh, uh, dude who is going to come in. He's also really big, six foot six, 327 pounds. He was a second round pick. Uh, so in... Uh, in the, his draft class, he was drafted in the same draft class as Jonah Williams, and he Jonah Williams was the number one tackle in that draft, if you remember. The Bengals ended up getting the number one tackle. This guy was ranked by PFF as the number eight overall tackle in 2019, and he was a top 50 player for them, for PFF on their big board. So he's going to push Volson, and, and, and the Bengals ended up with two of the best tackles out of that, out of that draft. We'll see if one of them translates into a really good guard in Max Sharping. Um... One of the big things, though, oh, it's becoming really interesting. I just read about the Bengals have cut Jared Allen, their backup quarterback. Uh, now, Jake Browning is still on the practice squad right now. So they didn't announce. So usually if they're going to call up a player from the practice squad to replace a player that gets cut, they'll do that at the same time. They'll announce that the guy's been cut, call the guy up from the practice squad, send another guy down to replace him on the practice squad, or or sign another guy from another team to be on their practice squad. So what this tells me is there's a potential here. Maybe Jake Browning season. Jake Browning did play okay in the in the um, in the preseason, but I think they're looking for some veteran uh, backup quarterback uh, situation right now. I think that don't be surprised if they end up bringing in uh, you know, a Josh Johnson type of, you know, a backup quarterback that has league, you know, quite a bit of league experience, some starting experience. 
seems like that might be what they're looking at doing. I'm not a, you know, I'm not trying to read the tea leaves, but it's interesting that they cut Jared Allen, who's their long, the, the long, the only backup Joe Burrow's ever known, and a longtime Cincinnati backup. So, really interesting stuff. Um, I think you're looking at a really, really, like this roster's shaping up really well. They, they really needed an extra offensive lineman. They went out and got, I think the be, I think Max Sharping is the best offensive lineman that got cut from any team this in this uh, in this process. So they went out and somehow picked, you know, as somehow Max Sharping fell to them. They have, remember, they have the 31st uh, waiver claim position, which means Max Sharping fell through every, basically everyone. And uh, ended up uh, the Bengals. Uh, the Bengals ended up getting him, which I think is a really big deal. Jay Tufele, uh, I remember scouting him back when he was coming out. I was uh, I had about a fourth, fifth round grade on Jay Tufele. He ended up being taken in the fourth round. We'll see if he pans out. You know, sometimes a change of scenery, a new coaching staff, a new scheme, a new perspective on how to play your position can really change a guy uh, from a middling can't find his footing type player to a player who's going to actually make a big difference uh, and these guys will have all every opportunity to do that the Bengals are not expecting any of these guys to step up and perform right here right now so really good really good position for the team to be in they're building the team correctly uh, they're picking up the extra little pieces last year it was bj hill via trade in the offseason that was the big move they don't need to really make anything any moves like that this year they, they you know they've got uh, they've got basically their what they need in place. I think the next things to look out for is I think they're still going to go and try to potentially snag a veteran wide receiver to be their number four in case they, they get some injuries going. That's still a possibility. Um, and I think they may end up, don't be surprised if they, they're going to, they're going to sign another corner. I mean, they're just, that that's just how it's going to go. I don't know who that's going to be, but keep an eye on that waiver wire. Uh, but if you're too busy, just keep an eye on me. Stay tuned, and I will let you know what happens. But until next time, Bengals fam, I've been Mike. This has been Who Daily. See ya.